G'day Starlo here. At the end of April 2023, my daughter Amy and I climbed into her 2006 petrol Toyota Hilux and left a rain-soaked New South Wales south coast behind to head out onto the vast western plains. Ahead of us lay an epic road trip of well over 5,000 kilometres, considerably greater than the distance from New York to Los Angeles or Moscow to London. Our week-long journey took us through four states and across the mighty Nullarbor Plain where the desert meets the bite along a dramatic stretch of coastline. From here we angled north through the interior of Western Australia and our ultimate destination, the town of Exmouth near the tip of Northwest Cape. If you'd like to read all the stats about our big drive, I'll include them in the description and the comments below. Amy had come here to work as a guide for the Exmouth Adventure Company and of course <laughs> I'd come to fish. What a magnificent place after an epic week-long drive that took us right across the continent at virtually its widest point. Amy and I finally arrived here in Exmouth near the end of Northwest Cape in WA. What a journey it's been. We didn't get here until quite late in the afternoon <laughs> but there was no way we were just going to sit around camp. We grabbed the rods, headed out to the flats at Bundigi, just north of the sanctuary zone. And uh, we're going to flick a few lures around this afternoon. It's a very low tide. We're having to wade right out across the exposed reef to get to the water's edge. I've got no idea if we're going to catch anything, but at least we'll be able to wet a line. Ah. <sighs> feels good just to be here. And the water's so warm! <laughs> Very different to the weather we left back home. I'm kicking off by casting a small cup-faced popper on my brim gear, although I've beefed the leader up to 20 pounds to deal with the coral and the potential toothy critters in these warm northern seas. It's shallow here on the gulf side of Northwest Cape and we're having to wade out quite a way to find fishable water, although I know it doesn't take much depth to hold predators here. There aren't too many signs of action yet apart from the occasional ripple of bait, but surprisingly it doesn't take me all that long before my popper attracts some attention. Got my first Exmouth fish for this trip, it's nothing very big. What have we got? A little trevally, I think. <sighs> Smack the popper. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh yes, you grunt, mate. I'll get the pliers out. Not a very big trevally. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and say what sort of trevally that is. It's probably a little brassy. They're quite common up here, Papuensis. Most people would be happy to call it a small GT, but I don't think it is a GT. There you go mate. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm a fair way out now but still only in knee deep water and fanning my casts in all directions. It's important to cover plenty of water. Something moving up there in the shallows. Let's see what it is. Oh yes! Yeah. Oh, gee, I don't know what that was, but it absolutely smacked it. Popper briefly hooked it. Let's see if there's any more in there. There was definitely something sniffing along the edge of that shallow patch. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There's fish on it. Oh come on! Yes! <laughs> That's a good fish. I don't know if I'm gonna stop him on the brim gear. Oh. <laughs> Oh, too good. 
yeah, I just saw some movement right up on the edge of that shallow weedy stuff. Put my lure in there, missed one, and then got one on the next cast. <laughs> uh, just got to get it out of that weedy stuff and keep it over the sand if I can. Might be just another trevally. It was quick when I first hooked it. Uh, yep. It's a bit bigger trevally. Oh, how good are they on this gear? Seriously. <laughs> this is what I drove all that way for. <laughs> I just love this sort of stuff. Light tackle sport fishing. It's just my brim gear from back home. Ah, oh, it's a solid little trevally, that one. Uh, mate, if I was a bit closer to shore, you might be coming home for sashimi, but I'm going to let you go. Gee, where's... he went so hard for his size. How pretty is that? Give you a bit of a look. <laughs> My late afternoon sun. I wanted that little popper. Alright, get the hooks out. himself and swims away. With the tide still dropping, the action ended as fast as it began, so we pulled the pin on the flats for now. Amy and I tried one last spot before dark, and although we didn't score any action, it was a wonderful place to watch the orb of the dying sun sink into the inky blue of the Indian Ocean. Tomorrow, as they say, was another day. And I could hardly wait. I've come to one of the many beaches along the western side of the Cape this morning. My first full day here at Exmouth. I've still got the little popper on that I used yesterday afternoon. I'll give that a run. The tide's coming in. The water's not as clear as I'm used to. It's a little bit stirred up. There may have been some wind. Oh, and I can see something out here already. It might be a ray. I'll just drop the popper in there. There's a big ray coming along the beach. Quite often there'll be fish with them. This floating weed might be a little bit annoying this morning. I'll try out here along this line of structure. Start off with some fairly short casts. Just get a bit of a feel for whether or not there's any life in close here. The ray is sitting right here in front of me. Normally, oh, that was a big fish. That was a, ooh. <laughs> I don't know if that was a big trevally or a queenie, but whatever it was, it was way too big for this gear. Holy smoke, that thing was wide across the back. Oh, you just never know what's going to happen here. I really didn't get a clear look at what that was. What a strike! I can't believe I haven't hooked either of those fish. <sighs> that was so close in. Damn.
this ray is coming right in close here. Let's be a little bit careful waiting here. I'll try and show you this ray. I don't know if you'll see him, but he's right here. Oh, and there's a fish there with him too, a small prevalley or something. A lot smaller than the ones that had a go at my popper. ray in the water here. I quite like these spots where the rays are. Their feeding often seems to attract fish and fish will follow them. I'll see if I can give you a look at this bloke. This is why you need to be careful though when you're wading up here. You would not want to get hit by the barb on one of those. There he goes. And that's what they'll usually do when they sense you coming. But if you happen to tread on one without them knowing that you're there, that's when you can get in strife. A little bit clearer here and a little bit less weed. Let's see if there are any fish. Well, that popper looks so good coming across that water. I'm just waiting for the big wolf. There'd probably be more effective lure choices than a popper today, but I'm just addicted to those surface strikes. Yeah, oh, yes, got him this time. No, yes, no, now it's weeded. Is it still on it? Oh, it got weeded. These hooks are so sharp and yet I'm just not pinning these fish. Again, they were trevally or queenies. They were pretty keen. There's, there's one. Oh, I can see a decent fish out there now. Where did you go? Yes, 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 come on. Come on, that's a good fish. Oh, they're just hesitant. That was a good size fish. Oh, wait, getting chased. Oh yeah, missed it. Got him, about time. Oh, what? This is crazy. I've never had so many strikes and not been able to pin one. Had him on. Yes, yes. Good size fish too. Just getting weeded every cast. Okay, nothing but lots of frustration on the popper. Let's try a squidgy. Test that drag. Oh, had a hit. <laughs> First cast. Got him. First cast, that is just crazy. All that time with the popper, and although I got plenty of action, oh, dropped him. I didn't hook any. And first cast with the plastic, I hook a fish. Still got dropsy though. But surprisingly, that was it, the end of the action. What a shocker of a session I'd had. <laughs> Hopefully I'd got that lot out of my system.
In the afternoon, I headed to one of the region's most popular land-based spots, Learmouth Jetty. And surprisingly, I had it to myself, briefly anyway. The amount of squid ink splattered on the decking here tells a story, as does the insane amount of bait in the water. No, those dark masses aren't weed or reef. They're tens of thousands of tightly packed hardy heads, and the clearly defined edges of the schools indicate that they're under near constant attack from various predators. <laughs> I was pumped. It should be just a matter of matching the hatch and scoring a hookup. But the fishing actually turned out to be pretty tough. Maybe there's just too much food here. Eventually I pinned a decent fish that did its best to shred my line around the pylons before, you guessed it, <laughs> pulled the hook again. I was having a shocker. A few more anglers turned up at this point so I decided to leave the jetty to them and head north along the beach beyond where another crew were retrieving their trailer boat. Here I switched to a smaller popper and back to my light brim gear. But not much was happening. I put the time in and finally, as the sun sank behind me, I was rewarded for all that effort. I was looking away. <laughs> that was going to be my last cast too. <laughs> oh wow. You can never, <laughs> never give up. <laughs> Changed over to that little Shimano popper. Oh, talk about at the death. Oh, that scared me. <gasps> I wasn't even looking at the lure. That wouldn't have been two rod lengths from the rod tip, I reckon. I wonder what we've got. I'd say a trevally. I was counting down the casts. So I was going to have six more and that was my sixth. I was just about to walk. You can see a bit of colour there in the shallows. Good fun on the brim gear. I'll get serious later in the week but I, I just wanted to get a couple of fish on this light gear. Yeah, it's just a little trevally. <laughs> Can't believe how hard he went. I might keep this one. I have some sashimi. Haven't got him yet, of course. Well, not a whole lot to show for my first full day in Exmouth. Had some great action this morning, but didn't convert any of it. And uh, a little bit of action on the jetty, pulled out of another fish. I've just had one of those days where I've just dropped everything. And you get that, <laughs> you just get runs of that stuff sometimes. Happens to us all. That's only a little trevally, but it's gonna make really nice sashimi. That'll do me for today. I'm going to get up early in the morning and go back to that spot that I went to this morning. Get there a bit earlier in the tide and see what happens. I'm still very much finding my way here, just land-based fishing, unguided around Exmouth off my own bat, but gee, I'm enjoying it. Okay, well I've come out quite a bit earlier this morning. I actually left town before the sun had cleared the horizon. It's just cracking over the top of the land there now. And uh, I've come back to the spot where I got that action yesterday morning, a little bit later than this. The tide is a lot lower. 
it's overcast. It was actually raining lightly on the way here. It's a beautiful temperature though. And just on spec, I've gone to the slightly heavier gear. I've gone from my brim gear to my snapper gear. Put a little bit bigger popper on. Let's see if we can find some action. Again, I'm gonna start around this little bit of man-made structure, this old line of posts here. And I'll start with some fairly short casts. Well, the flies are a bit friendly this morning. Oh, there's a cruising shark out here. I don't know if you can see it, but its fin just came out of the water. Good to see a bit of life. I just saw a disturbance of bait out here to the right slightly too. expected to get some action straight away but again it's a bit quiet Ooh, big ray here in front of me I'll tread on that in the low light conditions they call a cow tail ray. They've got quite a distinctive tail. I don't think you'll see it down here in this low light, but I can make it out just here in front of me. Well, I'm really surprised. I thought we might get one straight off the bat. Oh! <laughs> oh, I don't know what that was. There's a queenie, a little queenie after it, but surely that little queenie didn't make that big splash. Oh yes! <laughs> I don't think it's a giant fish, but... Uh, oh, it's jumping. It might be a long time, is it? Or a little queenie. Oh yeah, it's a little queen fish. <laughs> a bit overgunned for this bloke. It's a snapper gear. The first micro light of the day is up. They'd be looking for the whale sharks. Oh, great jump. <laughs> Even on this gear, they fight so well. Oh, I'm really tempted to just grab the brim gear and have a go. Of course, as soon as I do, I'll hook something really big, I'm sure. Give up. Go, oh, no, one more jump. <laughs> How can such a small fish pull so hard? Oh, don't go around my feet. Not with all those hooks. Right. Queenie on a popper. What a pretty fish. And you've got to really watch the spikes on them at any size, but particularly the little ones. Those spikes on the back between where the hook is and the second dorsal fin, and particularly the ones down on the belly just in front of the ventral fin there. They are so painful and they know just how to flick them to get you too. Grab my pliers. One hook out. Second hook out. And there he goes. All right, I better have another couple of casts with the big popper, just in case some of these larger brethren are around. It's starting to move a little bit more. Oh, 
think it's a big pipe there. There's some big mullet there or something. That little queenie came off quite a long cast and as soon as the popper moved, he ate it. Turtle just poked its head up out there. Oh, there we go, there's another strike. Things might be starting to wake up. <laughs> Something followed that all the way in. I can see the boils here in front of me. Bit of speed. Speed kills. But I just wasn't getting enough action on the bigger popper, so I made the decision to switch back to the light gear again. Some folks seem to think that all you need to do in the tropics is dip your line in the water and you'll catch fish, but trust me, it can be just as hard as anywhere else. Some days you'll really need to work for them, just like down south. Okay, got my brim gear and little Shimano bubble pop. See what sort of trouble we can get ourselves into with this. Cast really well. You know, there's probably a lot more effective lures I could be using than a popper. If I was throwing a little chrome slice or something, I'd probably do better. But I just love fishing with poppers. But if I don't get more, a bit more action, I will change over to something subsurface. Wherever I see a disturbance or a fin break the surface, that's where I put my next cast. Oh, yep. What have we got here? This is a bit strange. That was a funny sort of take. It's not a particular... I reckon I've jagged something. Maybe one of the... Oh, oh, oh no, it's woken up now and it's throwing the hooks. Oh, it's probably a little queenie. It took a little while to wake up to what was going on. I'll just check those hooks, make sure it hasn't damaged them because they're quite light hooks. No, they're okay. be another little queenie I think. <laughs> Listen to it taking line. <laughs> I'm on six pound braid and uh, just a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader here. Ah oh, look there's all sorts of activity happening out here now. Yeah things are definitely starting to happen. These are little queenies chopping into small bait that you can see out here. So going to the smaller lure was probably a good idea. Gee, he's taking some long. Tighten the drag up a little bit. What I don't want is for him to attract the attention of something enormous like a <laughs> shark or a big GT or something and get eaten. Here he comes. Well, maybe it's a trevally this one. Yep, it's a little trevally. See what sort. So many different varieties of trevally up in these waters. I think it's what most of us would call a brassy. Papuensis. Well, a lot of people would just call it a juvenile GT, but I don't think it is. Good fight on that gear. I do want a couple more of these. I kept one yesterday to make some sashimi for the folks back in the camp. And I want a couple more, but I won't kill this one because it's too early in the day. How's that for confidence? I reckon I'm going to get more. <laughs> Got to be a little bit careful 
have the sharp scoots or modified lateral line scales back here on the near the tail. They can be quite sharp, mostly in the bigger ones. And there's that little popper. Oh, he's got it well in. Grunting <laughs> away. Very typical. That's why Trevally are sometimes referred to as blurters. Mostly the silver Trevally back down home, but they all can blurt. Right, that's come out really well. Alright, a bit bigger one would be good, even on this gear. What's that old saying about careful what you wish for? <laughs> the next one I crossed paths with was quite a bit bigger. Oh, yeah! Oh, might have bitten off more than I can chew this time. From the strike, I would say queenfish, but I could be wrong. Raised a big sheet of water as it took it. <laughs> Definitely peeled some string. Oh, gone. Might have lost my lure. No. Might have straightened the hooks. Yep. They're only, like I said, light gauge hooks. They're really meant for brim and whiting. So I'm pressing them into service here, doing something they were never quite intended for. And I straightened the hook on that guy. <laughs> ah, dear, oh dear. Too much fun. At least it's starting to happen. Oh, look, there's a shark just cruising in front of me here with his fin out of the water. Only a little reef shark. Sometimes they'll have a go at a popper too. That'll be fun. Activity is picking up. It's like the the morning shift is clocked on, I think. What I got this time? Oh, 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 oh. There's a bit of rock here too, so I need to be a little bit careful. Keeping a nice high rod angle to keep the line up off any obstructions that might be out there. There's outcrops of weed and the odd bit of rock sticking up. Oh, just spooked another really nice flathead. <laughs> I'm going to have to try and target these. Oh, this is a beautiful trevally. This is a, I hope I can get this and show you. Caranx fur dow, which is also known as an island trevally or a chevron trevally. One of the prettiest fish. Look at that. Wow. I don't think I've ever caught one on a popper before. I haven't caught a lot, to be honest. Give you a good look. Just wash the sand off. Look at that. Just got to be careful here, I don't end up with the popper in my hand. What a gorgeous fish. All right. I'm going to uh, move to another spot very soon, so I'm going to keep that one. 
and that'll be the second part of our sashimi for tonight. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> People are probably saying, well, if it's so gorgeous, why don't you let it go? Well, I don't think you should judge what you keep based entirely upon human aesthetics. Just because a fish isn't as attractive, it doesn't mean it's any more or less legitimate to take it. All right. Lovely. Well, I certainly hadn't caught anything big or super impressive in my first couple of days walking the shores of the Northwest Cape. I'd had a blast and I'd already learnt a lot. I was really looking forward to the week ahead. Keep an eye out for part two and I'll show you what happened. Meanwhile, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines. Thank you.